and welcome back to Newsmax Now. I'm Miranda Khan. Time now for a look at your money news. Some experts believe America's economic recovery is the slowest in 50 years. According to Stephen Moore at the Heritage Foundation, Obama's weak economy is, quote, a national crisis. Moore says the current GDP is $1.6 trillion lower than it should be. The Commerce Department announced today that the U.S. trade deficit has now reached its highest levels in more than six years. And Angela Andretz, Apple's senior VP for retail and online stores, is now the highest paid female executive in America. According to Bloomberg, the 54-year-old made more than $82 million last year. While Disney's quarterly revenue outperforms expectations, the company's shares are up on Wall Street today and earnings jumped more than 6%. Experts say higher ad sales and increased spending at theme parks contributed to higher quarterly profits. And HSBC posted a 4% increase in first quarter profits, but the banking giant warned today that Britain's tax is preventing the company from raising dividend payouts. Now Europe's largest bank is considering whether it should move its headquarters to Hong Kong. All right, Miranda, perhaps some trouble on the horizon for banking institutions over there in the UK, but here at home, some analysts believe that the financial sector is still strong. We'll get that and more as we turn our attention to Tom Hutchinson, senior financial editor at Newsmax.com. Tom, thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me, John. All right, it's our pleasure. So we hear those first two stories from Miranda there. GDP not doing so well. Stephen Moore says uh, the, ec the economy's in crisis. We're also seeing record highs or near record highs on the uh, indices out there. But you say there's still value out there. Don't panic. And there's still some money to be made in stocks. Yes, I do. Uh, now, I want to qualify it a little bit. I of think um, we, go. we always need you can really get some. <laughs> you can really get some volatility in the next couple of months. So whatever you pick, I think it's a pretty good practice to put in a, a price a little below where it's selling now. Oh. Uh, but that said, there, there's two areas I think look pretty good right now. Uh, one is the financials, and uh, particularly the large banks um, with, with trading desks that uh, benefit from all the merger and acquisition activity that's going on, and also some of the asset managers. Um, who do alternative investments, where there's a huge market for in these pension funds. And they're also set up well, uh, should interest rates start to spike higher. Uh, the other area I think looks good is if you look at the energy infrastructure companies. These are the, the companies that pipe and store oil and gas, uh, aren't connected to these uh, volatile commodity prices, but just collect a fee for servicing the energy boom. And I think they've been neglected uh, with all this energy sell-off, but they still pay real high dividends and they're good value here. Now, Tom, are they being neglected or are people, investors, actually worried about this because it has been more or less a bear market for the uh, energy stock, the traditional energy stocks? Well, I think they've been real worried about, uh, you know, the oil drillers, the uh, exploration and production companies. Right and other companies that are really exposed to uh, commodity prices and get hurt uh, when uh, oil prices go down. These uh, stocks, however, uh, the infrastructure companies are not exposed. So investors haven't really been afraid of them or selling them. Uh, they just haven't been buying them okay. to the extent that I think is justified considering what's going on in the uh, energy industry in this country. All right, so perhaps an area of interest there. Let's also talk a little bit more about the financials. When you were talking about some institutions that might be set up well to benefit from a short-term run here, uh, specifically we talked about Wells Fargo and Blackstone. Why are those two uh, firms so well poised for this? Well, um, Wells Fargo uh, in the first place. Um, the, uh, these banks are really doing uh, very well uh, with their asset trading and their, um, their exposure to sort of these, um, uh, I, I think Goldman Sachs would probably be a little more of what I have in mind. Okay. Uh, they, said they've, they reported better trading revenue than they have since the recession uh, in this past quarter. Now Blackstone is a little unusual. They're the world's largest alternative asset manager. And what that is, it's every investment besides stocks, bonds, and cash. And the reason they're doing so well, they're sort of the, the premier firm, 
And there's a huge demand for them because all these pension funds have to deliver on decent returns. They can't put every cent they have in the stock market. So they're desperately looking for these uh, alternative type of investments. And everybody seems to be going to uh, Blackstone. And, and I, that's I really don't think this is that because, stop. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because we talked about some uh, factors last week. Goldman Sachs perhaps getting involved, at least in a uh, not direct way, with the Bitcoin game and also getting into those more of those personal loans to uh, small businesses. Uh, those alternative investments, interesting stuff. Tom Hutchinson, to learn more about what we talked about and get more of Tom's insight. You can go to the high income factor and, and see also more of his stuff at moneynews.com. Thank, Tom, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, thank you, John. Our pleasure. All right. He saved lives, but can he save our country? Coming up, Newsmax Prime host J.D. Hayworth is going to be here with us to talk about his exclusive interview with Dr. Ben Carson. 